This is about the 11 highest paying jobs that do not require a college degree. I don't know about you, but I've been taught my entire life that the main way of becoming successful was to go to school, get good grades, and get a high paying job. And that was the way to do it. So I did, except none of that, literally none of that was true. In fact, a lot of those who graduated with me and even before me ended up moving back in with their parents, not having a job for years and years until they could find something within their field that they were qualified for, only for them to be making under $45,000 a year. And here's the kicker. I graduated from college with a degree that was very hard to get, at least for me, and I found out that my first job did not require a degree. There's an immense amount of pressure on college students nowadays to become doctors, lawyers, engineers, but you can get the same if not more pay doing these other jobs and it won't require a degree or any kind of debt. Let's get into it. So I feel like this doesn't actually match the video as much better. All right, keep in mind guys, we're going in reverse order. So the salaries are gonna go up as we keep going throughout this video. Coming in at number 11, we have court reporters. They have a median salary of $57,150 and they have an expected job growth of 7%. These guys literally type up word for word transcriptions of trials and other legal proceedings. Sometimes judges even ask them to read back information for them and they also transcribe audio evidence as well. And as promised in the title of the video, this requires no degree whatsoever. But what it does require is a certificate in stenography and a bunch of educational institutions around the world offer this program and generally it takes about two years to complete. In those two years, they'll learn stuff like legal procedures, terminology, dictation, and voice writing technology. Coming in at number 10, we have electric electronics and installation repairs. And this sounds like exactly what it is. These guys install and repair electronics. To be specific, these guys repair stuff like gaskets, motors, fuses, stuff like that. And in order to install and repair electronics, these guys need to refer to what are called service guides or other types of specifications, as well as testing the equipment after the repair. And I don't mean to make this job sound easy by any means because it's not, but that is the gist. This job salary is heavily impacted by the amount of hands-on training you already have on top of the work experience you already have within the same field. And these guys have a median salary of $57,890. Just keep in mind, the main downside to choosing this career is that it's actually shrinking by 1% per year, and it's actually starting to slowly but surely get replaced by technology. Fun fact. Coming in at number nine, we have fire inspectors. This is like being a crime scene detective, but for fires. It's their job to figure out what happened, who was responsible for this fire, and why did it happen. They also go on to check to see if all of the fire extinguishers in the facility were actually working properly and if the correct regulations and guidelines and procedures were followed. This requires you to have a few years of experience at first. And I used to get so annoyed whenever I would apply to a job and they would say that I need experience. And I would be like, experience in what? How am I supposed to have experience at this job if you won't hire me to do this job in the first place because I don't have experience? It makes no sense. Well, well, for this job, you'll actually just need experience as a firefighter, as well as some on-the-job training before you're actually qualified. And these guys make about $62,512 annually. Number eight, we have aircraft mechanics, and they make about $63,000 per year. And honestly, I think I've always thought of this as one of the more exciting jobs on this entire list because I personally just like the idea of working on stuff specifically aircrafts. Aircraft mechanics do regular inspections, repairs, and maintenance on aircrafts. The main thing here is keeping the aircraft in operating conditions and also to keep it in safe conditions so that no one falls out of the sky because that happens. And this job requires a certificate that's recognized by the FAA. And if you don't know what FAA is, it's the Federal Aviation Administration. All right, number seven is definitely an interesting one. It's actually a theater makeup artist. And I know it's mostly guys who watch my channel, so I don't imagine you'd be interested in this. And for the two females who watch my channel, this might actually interest you. But this is actually an entry-level job, requires no degree whatsoever, and it is one of the highest paying jobs that don't require a degree. 
In fact, their median income is over $64,000 per year, and they have an expected 7% job growth, which, by the way, is more than the median income for your average actor or actress. This is an entry-level job, but it would help you a lot if you pursued training in cosmetology prior to applying, because that would just give you the edge over everyone else who applied and doesn't. And of course, this will require some on-the-job training, which you will get once you land the job in the first place. Because it's actually a skill to apply makeup to the performers that fits the scene, the setting, and the role of the performer. All right, number six, we have claims adjusters. Insurance companies hire claims adjusters to investigate insurance claims and interview people involved with certain insurance situations. All to prevent and minimize insurance fraud because if it keeps happening and it goes unnoticed, it could ruin an insurance company. The key about this job is choosing a sector that actually does not require a degree, which a lot of them don't require a degree, but some of them do, such as the automotive sector. Keep in mind, this job is expected to shrink 4% in the future. Coming in at number five, we have firefighter supervisors. These guys are on the front lines with the firefighters, managing and directing firefighting to ensure the safety of the entire community and the firefighting team. And this job requires some real leadership because you're literally leading people in life or death situations and you're ensuring the safety of not just your team, not just your department, but the entire community that surrounds the area. And the median salary for firefighting supervisors is $76,330 per year. But these guys can easily make upwards of $100,000 a year. And it's a dangerous but rewarding job and my hat goes off to those guys. Along with some moderate on the job training, you'll also need between one and five years of firefighting experience. And the job growth for this is at the national average of 5% and there's always gonna be a need for these guys. All right, number four, we have elevator technicians. I don't have to tell you that elevators can be dangerous. I mean, they lift several people up several floors. It could go bad very fast. These guys fix them. Now on paper, this job doesn't require anything more than a high school diploma, but you'll need a pretty good understanding of math and mechanics if you wanna do this job effectively and correctly. A great trade job because they give you all the tools you need to be successful. And they do so by requiring you to go through a four-year apprenticeship where they pair you with a very experienced worker and you learn all the tricks of the trade with them. No pun intended. And the apprenticeship is often just a mix of on-the-job training and also in a classroom setting, whether it's in the business or through a local union or in a classroom in like an educational institution. And this is where they learn about several different safety precautions as well as how to read blueprints. Also keep in mind, you're gonna to need to be pretty strong if you're gonna do this job. Oftentimes, elevator technicians have to carry very heavy equipment up at very high levels. Their median salary is $79,780 with a whopping job growth of 10%. With there being more and more multi-use facilities being built around the world that require elevators, these jobs are gonna be needed for a very long time. Coming in at number three, we have commercial pilots, not airline pilots, that requires a degree. I'm talking about commercial pilots. They earn a median income of $82,240 per year with an expected job growth of 8%. This job isn't extremely hard to get. What you need is a high school diploma as well as a commercial pilot's license, which you can get in six to eight weeks through a flight school that is approved by the FAA. And the cost for this is anywhere between $5,000 and $16,000, which is astronomically cheaper than any type of four-year degree ever. Commercial pilots are involved in unscheduled flight activities such as charter flights and aerial tours. Sometimes they even load their own luggage, schedule flights, and schedule maintenance for the aircraft. Coming in at number two, we have power plant operators, and these guys are extremely experienced. They plan and direct all the operations of a power plant, and specifically they control and monitor boilers, turbines, generators, and auxiliary equipment in power generating plants. They distribute power demands among generators and combine the current from all the generators and maintain voltage and regulate electricity flows from the plant. Holy crap. I'm not even gonna pretend like I wanna even begin to think about the amount of responsibility these guys have, but just know these guys have to be attentive, detail-oriented, and careful because if they aren't, 
things can go bad. And they earn a well-deserved $83,020 per year. And in order to get this job, you're really going to need a high school diploma and five years of experience within its respective field. But this job is expected to drop another 6% in the next few years because of all of the clean energy initiatives that we have going on right now. Coming in at number one, arguably the most challenging and most difficult job out of every single job I've just talked about, transportation and distribution managers. They plan, coordinate, and direct multiple systems and processes that relate to transportation, distribution, storage, and delivery. These guys have a lot of responsibility. I mean, to put it into perspective, these guys manage managers who manage other people who are supposed to deliver items from one place to another safely in the best quality possible, as consistently as possible, without messing up without mislabeling packages, without sending defective parts, without being late to its respective distribution center. I mean, trucks are going in and out and unloading and loading and you can't get hurt, but you're lifting heavy items. And there's just so much that goes in to these things to make this a successful business. And these guys have to absolutely positively be top notch at what they do. And they have to be great leaders. And there's honestly a lot more that goes into it, but that's all you need to know for now. And again, you only need a high school diploma to get this job. Now, a degree would help, but there's tons of top managers right now in the distribution and transportation industry that only have high school diplomas. And all you also need on top of that is five years of experience in distribution. And this has a 6% job growth in the future. So I can't tell you how much I wish I would have known about this stuff when I was in college. But more than anything, I wish I would have learned about stuff like investments and compound interest and passive income quicker because with these jobs these jobs are all great but you're still trading your time for money i didn't learn that you didn't have to trade your time for money all the time like for your whole life literally until right after i graduated from college which was also depressing but that is a story for another day Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal growth and personal finance so that you can control you, control your finances, and control your life, and really get the life that you want out of this and be in as much control as possible. So thanks so much for watching. So if you like this video, leave a like and subscribe. I appreciate every single one of you, and I will see you in the next video.